Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, kids of all ages, welcome to a very special deck profile here. And my Discord is freaking out on me. I don't know why, um, but we're going to keep on rolling with it. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Mr. Steal Your Girl with Odin, Loki, and Thor. Loki being the best one. We're going to get to that in a minute. And please welcome to all of you two, Mr. David. Hudson. How's it going, man? I'm doing amazing, brother. How about yourself? I'm doing oh. fan freaking fantastic, especially because I'm the only one that's going to have this Nordic list on my channel. So, please, by all means, I'm going to let you do all the talking. I'm going to sit back and relax with the rest of my audience. Please, tell us about this regional. Tell us how you came in eighth place with Nordics and how many times that people have to read your cards. So, go ahead and take it away and, and tell us the story. So honestly, so honestly, every round, every is, round really, is really, really, really funny, funny because funny. you'd start off, you would write, activate your right of Aramiser, you do your basic combo, you get to your Griffin, and everyone's like, oh, okay, it's pretty normal. And then you summon your Nordic monster. And <laughs> the reaction I'd have every single time was honestly hilarious. They'd pick it up and have to read it like three times because they're not like believing what they're looking at. Like there's a disconnect between what they're seeing and what's actually happening on the field. Which is honestly hilarious. Oh uh, my god. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the deck is really, really strong, though. Surprisingly, because it's Nordic. Uh, it can go second really well, because you have so many level 1 extenders to make uh, Zeus when you go second. And going first, you end on, like, Hulk over here, uh, Odin with the trap, and, like, a level 4. Which seems, like, kind of average. But when you oh, use the Hulk to summon Desert, Desert Locust, Locust. Uh, you can use the level 4 on board to make uh, Baron de Fleur during your opponent's turn as well, which is insane. The deck was so, 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 so strong. Uh, if you'd like, I can go over my matchups as well. Yeah, sure. Whatever you want to do. This is this is your time to shine, homie. If you want to do matchups first, deck profile, whatever you want. It's, it's all on you. You're in the driver's seat. <laughs> cool. Cool. So, so, round one, round I actually one, played actually against, against uh, Dino. Dino. Dino was my round one. And it was actually my only loss of the regional. Uh, I won uh, game one. Game two, he just, uh, he did Dino things. Just conducted me. Just killed me. And going second, I went first. And I think he opened, like, one of the best hands that Dino can actually open. Because he normal summon Ovi. I was like, okay, that's fine. Uh, I'll ash it, because he doesn't have this. Chains cross out. So I was like, oh, okay, sure. You're good at this. You're good at the game. So he adds Mist, uh, pitches Mist. I DD Crow it. And he chains... What did he chain again? I think he chained Bell on my Crow. Bad oh my shit. god, he opened He's... all the hand traps. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then he summons uh, Arcosaur. Arcosaur effect popped the baby that he already had in hand. Like, his hand was insane. I don't think you could do anything about that when your opponent opens just that much better than you. I don't know if you watch the channel all the time, but on my channel, that's what me and my audience call some baby back bullshit. <laughs> it's pretty much what happened, man. Uh, it, was, it was unbelievable, like... You can't, you can't do anything about that. They're just uh, a better duelist than you at that point. Oh, yeah. And then my round two, I believe, was ABC Therion. Uh, I was uh, X1 at this point, X1 round two. So, like, you don't get the, the best duelists in the world when that happens sometimes. Because uh, they also yep. lost. So, I got ABC Therion. And he was telling me before the game, he made his deck... In the car on the way to the region. You know. So he was actually re he was reading his own cards more than I was. Re uh, he was reading my Nordic cards, which was really funny. Oh my god! <laughs> so we went to time, and we drew in game three because uh, he kept reading his cards and my own cards. So it was like it's X X one one round two. So it's not looking good for me. I have to win. Literally every single round after that to top eight. Depending on how many people were there, yeah. Yeah. 
So my next round was a uh, sword soul. Uh, <laughs> that one was actually a pretty swift to o. Uh, I think I impermed his moye and he just passed, and I killed him. Because uh, a really cool thing about this deck is brave token plus griffin or illegal knight plus Odin is actually just exactly eight thousand for when you're going seconds. So it's pretty easy to kill them just like that when you go second. And my fourth round was my first flunderies of the day. Which, I, if you look at my side deck, I was actually very worried about it. I side yeah, deck. I saw that in the profile. I'm like, yeah, two zombie world with a banshee. Yeah, you don't, you don't like flunder. No, no. So most of my testing circle is playing flunder. So I was like, oh, flunder is probably a pretty good deck. I was like, I don't know that many people that play Despia locally, so I'll just side really heavy for Thunder, and I just swiftly 2-0'd it because of that. I Game 1, I went first, uh, you set up Svalin, I can't play under Svalin plus any other interruption, and then going second, I just shooting Riser in the zombie world, set Svalin, they can't play. Something I just now thought about too, with you mentioning that, you basically don't care about any board breaks, if you think about it, solely because of Savali. If they if they dark ruler you, you can just negate it. If they yes. try to miss it behind you, you can just miss it, or oh, you can just goodness. negate it the end phase. This deck is really cool because when you get this, this will come up in my next matchup. My next matchup was actually Mystic Mind Sky Striker, uh, round five, and I a really neat interaction I noticed really early on is you can just let the mind resolve. You don't care. Because you can negate it uh, whenever you need to at any point in the turn. And during your own turn, you can just turn it off as well whenever you need to. Like, yeah, Mind true. is just not a card that affects this deck at all. That's, that's dope. That's really cool. So, <laughs> again, Sky Striker was a, like a swift, easy 2-0. Really? Just a swift 2-0? Yeah. yeah. It was honestly like... It was a buy. <laughs> wow. I would think something with Sky Striker that can grind out really well, I would think would kind of give you problems because typically decks, at least that I've noticed in my testing, that are just all gas, gas to the floor, which is at least the idea I got from the Illusion of Chaos and the Magician Souls package, seem to struggle a bit with decks like Sky Striker. I mean, if you hit the Savalin, you hit the Savalin. Um, yeah. Yeah. But you, you didn't feel that you really had any struggle against any sort of grind? No, no. Not, not even a little bit, to be honest. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I was like a little worried when he uh, activated the mine as well. I was like, oh, oh shoot, what do I do here? But then I like thought about it for a couple seconds and I was like, oh, I can just shoot shotgun this fallen whenever I need to. And then I can play later on uh, in the turn when I need to with like my Hulk and a Locust and a Baron de Fleur. Which is really cool. Really, really, right. really cool thing about the deck. And then my. Second last round was Plant Therion. Uh, this one actually went to game three. That deck is really, really, really strong. Uh, he was just pushing through my interruptions like it was nothing game one. And I lost that one super, super hard. Uh, game two, I set up my, my board. It was pretty normal game, actually. Uh, he didn't have his uh, regular stat game to be able to make uh, any hand traps, so it was just, uh, uh, what's it called, Loki, and then just pray I didn't have anything. And I had the Ash, and uh, it's fallen if he had any other like extender, so he lost that one. And then game three, I felt so bad. He bricked unbelievably bad. <laughs> He opened he legit unplayable in game three. He looked really, really upset. Mm. It was just like a just bunch of plant bricks, like the carrot way champion and like the rose girl and wrote in the true uh, rose book, I think. It was Another like, saying we have on the channel uh, since you brought that up is uh, he opened up what we call booty booty butt cheeks. So you yeah, have to experience booty, all booty, the booty, things all right. that we talk about on the channel. <laughs> And then my last round was uh, against Flunderies again. Uh, and this one was another Swift 2-0. Uh, funny story, in Ottawa, we actually had this crazy, uh, I believe it was called a Derrico, which is a crazy thunderstorm. Uh, the wind was blowing down trees just up the street, like three power lines went down. 
Oh no, it's the Nordic gods. They're coming yeah. in. <laughs> Nine, I swear to God, like nine different people came up to me that round. They're like, Dave, this is your fault. You're summoning Thor, man. This is on you. And like uh, three powered lines actually fell into the street, like maybe four or five hundred meters up from where the venue was. And we've lost power during the last round. Oh my I was god. Like, Oh my oh god, my I'm not god. gonna talk because there's gonna be no power and they're gonna have to cancel the regional. Oh and no! A couple oh, of minutes no. into that, uh, some like uh, backup, genera backup generator went up and we had like just enough light to be able to see. So it went through, but during that like blackout, we were being deck checked and it was a good probably 20 minutes. I'm being deck checked, so I was like, oh no. <laughs> Wait a minute, something? hold on. You, you of all the people the power went out, deck I was panicking super hard. Oh my god. So even when the power went out, they're like, yo, man, listen, we gotta check your deck. Yeah, 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 yeah. What? I was like, how are you even gonna look at my <laughs> the condition of my sleeves <laughs> when there isn't like barely any light in the venue? They're gonna take a flashlight from their phone and shine it on. Like, oh, he's, he's snacking the gullet bursty. <laughs> GG. <laughs> This colored bursty has got a scratch on it, brother. <laughs> You're done. <laughs> that card. I was reading that in my deck profile. That thing is stupid good. Like, it's really good. No, this card's unreal. It has, like, nine effects, and all of them are good. Like, it, it treats itself as any Nordic tuner. It summons from hand. It recycles from grave. It's a tuner on top of that. It's unbelievable. Oh, my lord. Well, it's it's cool though because like your your story about the regional and everything reminds me of like when I talked with Trickstar um, because I, I I ended up not to toot my own horn or anything but I was the first it just so happened to work out <laughs> with the regional season where I had talked with Trickstar right when they came out and it was this it was at the start of that 2017 regional season when Zodiac were tier zero and we were soon gonna have a balance or whatever so the first regional that happened was in Kissimmee Florida so I played pure Trickstar and I top of it and I remember it was Team Samurai's build. So I was technically the first player to top with pure trick star. And I started out the same way. Round one, I lost. And I lost to Black Wings, of all things. I'm like, all right, no, it's going to be a dog God. shit day. I cannot tell you to this day how I lost. I genuinely don't know. He was just able to overpower me, and I couldn't do anything. Lost that, and then I won, like like you, just like five, six rounds in a row, losing to um, True Draco, I remember. And I even made a misplay, and it wouldn't matter because I would have lost anyway. And then I just won the rest of my rounds against Zodiac because they just didn't know how to play against my deck. I'm, I'm, I'll never forget my last round opponent said that he side decked out his two copies of My Body as a Shield because he didn't think I played board wipes because I didn't have him in game one and I side decked them in and he lost because oh, of it. No. So oh. it goes to show that pantsing people, even if they're playing a tier zero deck, tier one, whatever, when you play something like this, whether it's Nordics or when we get tier elements, Splite, you know, while you're drinking a Sprite, whatever, <laughs> it goes to show that though that these decks can creep up and pants people. You know, like you said, you know, someone's dropping out, you know, a token and a griffin rider, they're like, okay, whatever, he's gonna have one omnigate. Then they're shitting their pants when you have a big ass four thousand Odin on the board, which if I understand correctly, with the link and its own effect, it basically becomes unaffected by all card effects. It may as well, it may be. As well be. Uh it's also uh, insane as well because of this guy in grave that I nobody has ever read before. The, the grave effect of this guy? Because they'll be like, do you have any grave effects that can activate right, right now? And I'm like, not right now. So they'll like, they'll out the Odin by sending it to the graveyard. And what this guy says is, if an Azir is sent from your possession, from your field to the graveyard by your opponent's card, period. So it even triggers on under Super Poly. You can banish it from grave, and then you special another name from your extra deck. That's insane. Yeah, yeah, like nobody ever read that. <laughs> and it triggered so many times. They'd be like, access code pop. And we'd be like, okay. Alice? <laughs> They'd be like, what? Excuse me? He does what so, now? So, speaking of the Asir gods, since I mentioned Loki at the beginning for good reason, which one did you bring out the most and which one did you bring out the least? And which one would you say is the best? Uh, I didn't summon Loki once the entire time. Uh, I. <laughs> You like, I played him in case I played against Striker, because it's like a solemn judgment kind of in the battle phase. Uh, even when I played against Mind Striker, it uh, didn't come up one, one single time. Uh, I think Thor is probably the objectively the best one, because he has the best tuner for floating, and he has the best effect. 
but I found myself summoning Odin the most. Because when you open Brave uh, plus a name, the best three to summon is Alvis, Ivaldi, and Valkyrie. Mm. And uh, I'd rather summon the Odin when I have those three specifically because uh, it lets the Odin flow. Because you need to banish uh, Ascended to him, especially from Raven and Raven. And Valkyrie right. is Ascended to him. So mm. I found myself summoning Odin the most. But I think Thor is better. Objective, objectively. And I'm sure a lot of people are going to ask in the comments, is it better to go first with, I mean, I'm sure with the Brave Engine, it's better to go first, but like, can it, can it go first and second? If you're just play testing this and people are learning it, should they go first? Should they go second? What, what do you recommend when it comes to kind of playing this deck? Uh, I was going first every single time, but I'm playing a lot of hand traps. So going second wasn't really a problem. Uh, you can also like illegal might start picking away at their boards as well when you go second too, instead of making the, the Griffin Rider. And also, uh, you have like this cool package here. This is one of the coolest normal summons in Yu-Gi-Oh! Because what this card says is, if it's normal summon, during the main phase this turn, uh, you get an extra normal summon in, in addition to your normal summoner set. This is not an activated effect. So this is a normal summon that has an effect that works under Rite of Air Music, which is really, really cool. What? Yeah, it's not an activated effect. There's no, there's no colon anywhere that indicates this activates. Yo, that's in, that's busted. Right? right. So you can Damn. like, so you can like make your Zeus with those two, with like a summon lightning gale when you're pushing for second, and you can just get your normal summon because <laughs> it doesn't activate. Wow, it's insane. That's, that's so, yeah. insane. <laughs> Going second is no problem in this deck, man. But uh, I would rather go first. I'd rather set up uh, like Odin with uh, a Griffin Rider to back it up with the Swallow. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, then. Well, uh, if you don't mind, then just go ahead and go on card by card and uh, kind of give us insight into uh, how the heck you play this deck. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Alvis is a three of. Uh, it's probably the best name. It basically makes your goal vague, uh, it's cost free. Basically, uh, if, if it's banished by the effect of an Nordic Link, you can send a Nordic from your field to grave, then send two from deck to grave, whose uh, the combined levels of all three monsters have to equal 10, and then you just get an easier for free from your extra deck. So that card's insane. Uh, also does the grave, like, uh, the floating effect that I mentioned before. It triggers off of Super Poly, Kaiju, Rayeki, Lightning Storm, any of those. And then you just get a free one from your extra deck. So... He's insane. He's very, very, very good. Uh, Ivaldi and Gullen Bursty have a really cool interaction that came up a couple times. So, if uh, Gullen Bursty can summon a Nordic from your hand, so a lot of the time I'd normal summon it if I have Ivaldi. And what Ivaldi says, if you control an A0 Nordic, you can special it from your hand. Anyway. So, there's so many times where this would bait out like an Imperm on it for like <laughs> no actual reason. Because uh, if it gets Imperm, you can just special the Ivaldi from your hand anyway, and Ivaldi gets you one of your Nordic Rebels here. So, these cards have a really, really cool interaction together. And also, a lot of the time, Golden Bursty uh, it adds you a Nordic from your, for your follow up when your hand is pretty good. Because it adds a Nordic from your hand once per turn. It was insane. Uh, Valkyrie is just a name. Same with Tang Yonster. They're just uh, levels for super summoning. They don't really have effects. This is just happens to be the best level for you. The effect I think came up one time, it's, it's so slow. It's just if a monster dies, you can special it from your hand. And when his battle position is manually changed, you can special in order to be screened back. So one so time, time I got the effect off. I summoned the Golan Bursty. The Golan Bursty added back an Evaldi from Grave. And then I got to make an extra easier booster just off of this one card. It's just really, really slow. Yeah, especially for like 2022 Yu-Gi-Oh. I mean, we're talking about an archetype that came out back in 2010. Yeah, and and even someone had commented on my original deck profile video, and I think they said something like the deck hasn't even topped since like between like it's, 2010 to 2012, so I mean, that been 11 years. just speaks for itself. Uh, it's been 11 years, actually. Uh, I talked to the guy who had the YCS talk at the Montreal region on the day after. His name wow. actually is also Dave, and he's also Canadian. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. 
uh, and then this guy I mentioned before has the really, really cool interaction with Rite of Aramisir. And it also has a grave effect where if it's sent from the field to the graveyard, uh, you can add in a relic from grave to hand. So if these get MST'd, uh, you can just add in that. But the cooler interaction is it lets you pitch your relics for souls. And then when you link this off for Golve, you can add the relic that you pitched for souls back to your hand. So it's like a free plus one. Hmm. Uh, the adventurer engine is insane because it gives you like a plus two when you see right to be able to basically pay the cost for your gold egg for free. So they're fully mandatory. You, I don't think you can play this deck and not play these cards. Right. That was one thing that um, I was thinking about when I did the video because I'm like, you know, you gotta banish three cards, but you get out three. Nordics, but essentially, like you're running these cards to help mitigate that because it's just free pluses. You're really not banishing much that you wouldn't have already had. Yeah, you can yeah, just you can banish your that. faithful and Draco back a lot of the time just for free. Like it doesn't it doesn't, doesn't hinder you that much because you have uh, your Solin that you're going to be getting off of your your Golvain. Because Golvain right. falls on this, and this can get you this. So you will always, always, always have Solin. I don't think I ended a turn where I resolved like a Nordic play where I didn't end with Spawns. Uh, Souls Engine, uh, it's the same thing. You can like uh, just send these as well just to get free cards. Because a handful of Nordic monsters is actually really good. Because they all interact so well with each other. It's like this gives you another normal summon. You can normal summon this, which specials like another one from hand. Then you can just extend it to like Hulk plays. So it's pretty self-explanatory. Right. Uh, I played Snow for Shooting Riser, just to have a target to send off of it, game one. But it's more for game two to send your Banshee to get a uh, zombie world against certain decks like Thunder. Right. Uh, I played 3 Ash, because it's really good against Despia, and then Crow. I have a lot of Three of them Thunder. What's up? I said three of them things. I was three so of them things. Three pro. Yeah, just to hit uh, Bright Needed Red. Yeah. Because I don't care I don't about care what about the, the rest of the board does. It's just to hit Bright Needed Red and have like overlap against some other meta decks. But it's definitely just for Bright Needed Red. <laughs> uh, just the adverse to the adventure package. Uh, one Rhoda, because it searches a Valde. And seeing this card as an extender is really, really cool. Uh, foolish for the Enchantress, and then for really weird hands, you can like Foolish an Alvis, and then add it to, uh, from Grave to Hand with Villain Bursty, if you really need a way to get into a Nordic play. Uh, oh, this, this, okay, so this is a really cool card in this deck, when you do see it, because when you get Ash, okay, you can on your Gulvig. This is not cost to banish, so if you Ash my Gulvig and I have called by the Grave, I can chain Cold by the Grave, banish your Ash, and because Golvig is not cost, I can then banish my own Cold by the Grave that is still on the field to get a free monster from deck with Golvig. Really, really cool interaction. Huh. It also works with Cross Out, but I didn't have room for that. Uh, played Imperm, it's really good, and then just the two relics. This just happens to be the second best second one. It kind of sucks, to be honest. It's like yeah, at first when I was reading, I thought, oh, it's like a punishment double pop. I'm like, wait, no, it's only a one pop. You just have to banish to target any card on the field and pop it. Yeah, yeah. and then, but you get the monster back in like two end phases, which never has ever happened. <laughs> and for side, uh, this was for Sword Soul and other Grave decks. I think I summoned it like once, but I'm still glad I had it. The Sword Sword, I think, got second at the event. Uh, this was for Despia and Thunder. Uh, Broken versus Thunder. Uh, Twin won me my last round against Thunder as well. Uh, it was actually really funny. He he did his Thunder play, and then he added Dreaming Town from deck to hand with m -Pen, And he like didn't shuffle his hand. So I could see that like the Dreaming Town was still like the first card in his hand, and then he set it, and then set another card. So I just like stand by Twin Twister, popped the 
the map and the Dreaming Town because I knew exactly where. It was. And you knew what to pop because he didn't. Oh, yeah. that's dirty. Yeah, I was paying attention because I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to pay attention here. I just popped both, and he didn't have any interaction uh, at any point during my turn anymore, and I, I just killed him. I just wow. OTK'd him straight up. Big brain plays. That's why you shuffle your hand, folks. Yup, yup, yup. Sometimes the little things matter, guys. Yup. They matter a lot. Yup. And then triple judgment just to solidify my board going first. But honestly, it kind of sucks. <laughs> really? There's, yeah, there's a lot of cards that I would rather was. Like maybe um, Gravity Collapse? I don't know if you know what that card is. Gravity Collapse? This card. This card. It's if your opponent would summon a monster. You contribute a synchro and they get the summon, and if you do, they can't summon for the rest of the turn, period. Damn! Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, so and that's a counter trap too. Probably be that. However, this is the cool thing about this card in this deck, because Fallen has a second effect where you contribute a Nordic to special and easier from your grave. So this is actually free in this deck. You, you're wow, basically not paying the cost because you can just end phase summon back the easier that you tribute for that effect. Well, actually, well, with that being said, with the gravity class, what changes would you make in the uh, main side? Um. Well, I'd probably play like more board breaking cards now. I'd probably play like dark rulers, maybe talents and droplets over some of the hand traps. Like I think crow would go probably. And then I'd probably cut some of the, the one ofs as well, just to fit in more three ofs. Like maybe the Rhoda and the Gummier, just to fit in space. Mm -hmm. And you can make an argument for cutting souls down to four as well. Because it's still four copies, it's just it's nice to have the level one when you're going second to be able to make a Zeus. Right. And you didn't feel you really bricked it all with 45 cards? No, not at all, actually. Uh, you're playing 15 Nordic names. So seeing those is not a problem. And I saw the adventure engine about as much as I'd expect. I'd, in a best of three, I wouldn't see it in maybe one of them. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And the extra deck is pretty normal. I mean, for a Nordic deck. <laughs> uh, the Shooting Riser, a lot of the time, was there to just send this. But if your opponent's hand was really bad, I would uh, send Enchantress uh, during the end of their main phase, just to get access to my engine. And then you can make Dragster with it. Uh, Locust, I made a lot. Uh, the best deck, the, the best board the deck can make ends on Herald, this... Uh, Odin, an extra body, and this Fallen. So you have like a Herald Negate that can search uh, Illusion, and then you can make Baron during their turn. You have the Odin and this Fallen. And I'm guessing with the Adventure Engine, you end on that board, but with a token, the Dracoback, and the Griffin Rider? Yes, correct. Gotcha. So essentially, the opponent ends up playing with the Griffin is a Negate, the Savalon's a Negate. You have Odin and the, the the Link protecting Odin, so they're essentially playing with, like, what, a three, two-card hand? Usually it's about two, if you open that combo. Gotcha. There's, there's a neat interaction as well, where uh, sometimes them getting a discard to grave is good for them with the Desert Locust, because they get a card in grave, but it actually gets banished because of Herald. Ah, uh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, two Golveig, that's all you need. I, I never missed the third one, honestly. Uh, one Hulk, and then the Zeus package. Because sometimes you open like these two, and you make Baguska in attack mode, and it has a protection effect. Right. Yeah. Well, damn. I'm, I'm not, my mind is still trying to process the fact I'm looking at Nordics, and I haven't gone in a time <laughs> machine back to 2010. I mean, straight up, I have not seen this deck since 2010. And I'm 25. I was born in 1996, so I was like 14 when I was. Yeah, so we're nice. we're about the same age. You probably haven't oh, seen it since like the anime in like 5Ds, man. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, because I remember uh, back in the day, I was playing uh, junk and debris with a neospatial engine with like cross porter and convert contacts and stuff. And there was a guy who I remember everybody used to call him Rich Boy because he was literally like a set of Kai, but like he always paid money to get like cases and stuff. And I remember at the time he was playing Nordics and. Uh, it was funny because like I was playing Neospatial Junk and Debris and I was beating him every 
every week until I found out by like week five, I was using convert contact wrong because you can only foolish barrel in Neospace and not a tanned alliance. I'm like, oh, I've been cheating him for five months. <laughs> Uh, I wouldn't let him get at any Nordics or anything. I'm like, nah, man, I gotta stop you in your tracks. Then he tried Lang's to switch the scraps, and I still won. Why was um, Rich, Rich Boy playing Nordic, Nordic in 2011 as well, man? <laughs> I have no idea. But then he switched to scraps after Drev came out, and then I just stuck with Neospace and Junk and Debris, and I was still winning. And then I realized that I was using Convert Contact wrong, and I'm like, oh, well, let's go ahead and switch decks. Let's go to Infernities. Let's set monsters in our back row. <laughs> Oh, oh no, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> oh, I told a story about how I did that. I did it with a friend of mine at that same local, and I still lost. <laughs> <laughs> that was what was terrible about it. I, I like popped off with Mistworm and everything, and then my friend was playing Black Wings. He breaks my board and beats me. And my friend, shout out to uh, Derek Kingsley, aka Big Bruce94, he calls me the next day. And he starts laughing his ass off on the phone. I'm like, bro, it's not funny. He's like, you're right, it's not funny. Because you <laughs> cheated. You sent Infernity in your back room and you still lost to Black Wings. I'm like, man, whatever. And I just like slammed my little flip phone shut. It was bad. It was so bad. <laughs> I was like, man, if we finna lose, we gonna lose, we're going to go out on top, man. We're going to do what we can. <laughs> but, uh, man, dude, this, this deck is cool. This deck is cool. Do you think you would make any sort of changes like... Um, you know, obviously Tactical Masters uh, just showed on Konami's website today that it's getting delayed too. They don't have to worry about Mr. Runes and all that. But Power of the Elements, that's not getting delayed. We're getting that in about two months. Would you make any changes? Would you throw in a Splite engine? Would you throw in a Tier Element engine? Would you make any changes for the upcoming meta? So, so that's the thing. I, I think, like, if you played Punk in this deck, it could work. But I don't know about Splite or Tier Elements. Uh... Yeah, I think I definitely think Punk could work like with Italian to Ziamen. I don't know how I'd go about building that yet because the extra deck is so tight. But I think it's doable. Yeah. Yeah, but I think mainly I'd rather just play board breaking cards like um, Dark Ruler, Talents, Droplets instead of summon hand traps. I think that's probably the biggest change that I make. And then uh, like these three, for example, could be cut for three of as well. This this barely comes up. This is just an extra name, and you're playing four copies of Souls already. Gotcha. Well, cool, man. Any final comments that you want to make uh, for this deck profile slash uh, interview? Um, shout out to the the Nordic Discord. <laughs> 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 uh, they're pretty cool on there. Um, they're not playing a list like mine. They're like they're playing old older technology, but they're they're nice people that were very. Uh, very nice to me when I post my list and stuff. And then shout out to everyone here in Ottawa as well. Uh, I love the community over here. They're so, so, so nice. That's awesome, man. Yeah. That's all I got for you. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is this is the Nordic God right here. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you in the next video.